What's up guys and welcome back to another video. Today is another sporting video. I want to respond to a question that was asked to me last week with regards to my previous sporting video. And the question was, should South African, should South Africa use overseas players? Now there's a two-way street there, um, in my opinion. <sighs> players are going overseas because either they want to earn better money, either they want to further their career, um, in rugby or cricket, whatever it may be, or its politics are getting involved in sport in South Africa and they simply just can't handle it. They can't handle the stress, they can't handle the, the you know, the worry and wait. Am I ever going to get a chance because of my colour or, or all those other questions that need to be asked? Do I feel? It depends. Um, the reason why I said it's a two-way street for me is because if I look at the Sharks, for example, Bosch of New Flyers is phenomenal. Great upcoming young player who's playing phenomenal rugby. Now, he is young, very young actually. So I think he needs one or two years to really, or definitely one, yeah, one or two years to build into the player that he needs to be. Because if we throw in a player so young, so quickly, we could... Get, Lose him to injury the whole time. Andre Pollard, good example. Patrick Lambie, constantly injured. And those issues we can't afford to face. So if we replace a player like that, then fine, bring those overseas players in. But if players have been playing for provincial rugby in order to play for their country and have worked hard and deserved the position, in my opinion, they should get first priority, not the boys overseas. The boys overseas are pretty much there for money or to better their career or get more playing time because they feel that quite a system or politics are too heavily involved. I respect that decision, I really do, but a person like Brian Abana, Dwayne Formiel and all those older blokes have literally gone there for the money. Now I know Brian Abana said it's not just the money the other day, he said it's politics as well, rightly so, but he's never had a problem with with politics in his career at all so I don't know why he's saying that other players have had problems and I understand and respect them going overseas but if a player has played provincial rugby and has played very good rugby and I don't care what the colour is if they've played good rugby to me they should get first choice or, or should be the first one chosen in overseas players yes they can come in but they can't just come in from nowhere and replace um, a player who's been playing great rugby for his provincial team. Last year we brought back Mornay Stang. Now Mornay Stang hadn't played Springbok rugby for I think over a year or two and all of a sudden he was thrown back in when we had other potential flowers that could have played who've played provincial rugby. Now Mornay Stang was a good choice because he is a damn good fly off and a damn good kicker and did win us a game or two but why must a player who's been playing provincial rugby and be playing hard suffer because of someone like him? Because he's a, a more experienced player. So the African rugby need to throw away the idea of getting older players back in the team. And we need to focus on the youth and the younger generation in this country and develop them in order to achieve better success. If we keep focusing on the old blokes, we're not growing anywhere and we're not growing be ahead of the Rugby World Cup. We've got a little, two years to go. And we're still playing players like Mornay Stain. There's talk of Ruan Pino even coming back. Fine, they're playing great rugby overseas. Good for them. But they are old. They are on retirement level. Victor Madfield coming back out of nowhere. Respect the man 100%. But there's Peter Steph, the toy. There's Ibn Etzebeth. There's younger players. The Sharks have a good six and seven coming through. Um, you know, we need to develop those guys and focus on them and put more money into the provincial levels. And that goes for cricket and soccer as well. Focus on the people who are loyal to their country and down here. If they go because of chances, fine. Money, fine. It's better economy at this stage. I respect that, I really do. But when it comes to players who sit back, sorry, not sit back, who are focused, determined to play South African rugby and are proud of playing provincial rugby, 
in my opinion, they should get priority and they should get thought, um, thought after. I understand if these players are good enough to go overseas, then they'll come back. Fafta Clark, he's going overseas now. He's young. He's got so much potential ahead of him. But because they, people see potential, they offer him a lot of money and he can't refuse it. A.B. de Villiers, for example, in cricket. It's just a matter of the Colpac decision. They're going overseas to further their career. Right? Kyle Abbott, yes, and all those other guys. But they're also going overseas to earn a better living for their future. Now, that's fine, but they don't see a future in, in um, international cricket, which is why they were for, forced to not to retire kind of thing. So it's, it's, it's a two-way street, to be honest with you, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's something that really needs to be looked at, and politics need to stay out of sport. Leave it to the sporting codes, governing bodies, to deal with it, and focus on the, the racial aspect. I'm strong on that. If a player of colour is playing good sport, they deserve to be in the team, 100%. I don't care if they're black or white or coloured or whatever. If they're good, play. But if they're not, don't force them into a position because one, you could be ruining their career by putting them in before they are ready and two, men mentally they're going to get um, affected because they're going to say, oh, I'm not here on merit. I'm here because of my colour. That's not fair on a player or a team or teammates. So yeah, should South African Sporting players from overseas play for South Africa? Yes and no. But there needs to be proper reasoning. If this player is good enough provincial level, go for it. They deserve it. But yeah, it's a money game. It's a political game. Um, and it's a career choice game. You know, it's just, it's just a bit, it's sad that it gets, to the situation because we should be able to fund for our own players and give them good salaries but we can't because of politics and sport and how that's effective and with the economy going down we can't afford to play the players enough which is why they leave so again it's a two-way street um, personally I believe in the provincial team should get priority and should go first because they put their blood sweat and tears into provincial rugby and want to play international rugby so then to me they should get priority but if players like a Fafta Clark is going he's going because of money technically so again it's just it's one of those things that needs to be dealt with by the sporting codes governing bodies so they need to sort sit down and sort this out because it's a problem that needs to be identified and it's a problem that needs to be addressed my opinion guys please feel free to to share your opinions down below and comment down below. Um, let's discuss this. What are your opinions? I had a f quite a few New Zealanders and Italians um, comment on my video last week. What do you guys think? If you're from England, if you're from what? What are your opinions of South African rugby, and where? What do you think should happen? Should probably you'll all agree politics should stay out of sport, but are players going for money or are players going to further their career? two-way street 50 50 but clear your opinions with me guys if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button i'll see you guys real soon for another video stay safe and never give up cheers